Worker Health and Hygiene. Fruit and vegetable consumption is important for good health by providing important vitamins and nutrients, as well as preventing some chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. Fortunately, fruits and vegetables are also delicious. It takes many dedicated people to meet the demand for fresh fruits and vegetables. Safely producing fruits and vegetables requires everyone involved in planting, growing, harvesting, packing, and transporting fresh produce to understand food safety practices, as well as commitment from company owners and managers. It also requires good food safety practices throughout the rest of the food system, including in grocery stores and in homes. Each piece of fruit and vegetable that is harvested or packed with hands can travel thousands of miles to feed all kinds of people, men and women, children, the elderly, and families just like yours. Unfortunately, consumption of fresh produce has been linked to some major foodborne illness outbreaks that have made people sick. These outbreaks also resulted in the United States government passing a law to regulate the food safety practices used during the production of fresh fruits and vegetables. The Produce Safety Rule is part of the Food Safety Modernization Act that was signed into law in 2011. One of the requirements of the Produce Safety Rule is that those working with fresh produce must receive annual training on food safety practices, so this video was created just for you. Another requirement is that farm owners provide the resources needed for you to implement those food safety practices every day while you are working. This is important for the safety of all consumers as well as for the economic viability of the entire produce industry. Foodborne illness outbreaks not only lead to illnesses, but also to lost jobs and other negative impacts that can affect the produce industry for years. The good news is that by working together, we can take the steps necessary to reduce risks during fruit and vegetable growing, harvesting, and packing. This video will cover practices required in the produce safety rule as well as other good agricultural practices that reduce produce safety risks and prevent contamination. We know you are already doing many of these things every day. This is an opportunity to reinforce important practices and make sure everyone is aware of what they can do to protect fresh produce while they are working. The video footage that you'll see was recorded on real farms and in packing houses across the United States to highlight a variety of practices and conditions. Keep in mind that no operation is perfect. If you notice situations where practices could be improved, take note of those practices and think about how you could make them more effective at preventing contamination. Your supervisor or trainer may take time to discuss some of these situations with you at the conclusion of the video. Microbial contamination. One way that fruits and vegetables can become unsafe is by carrying harmful microorganisms, such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites. These harmful microorganisms are called pathogens. In fact, microbial pathogens are the leading cause of produce-associated outbreaks and illnesses. Although we cannot see microbial pathogens without a microscope, they are everywhere, even on us. The most common sources of pathogens are humans and animals and their feces. In many cases, these sources of pathogens are unavoidable. The goal is to prevent these pathogens from spreading and contaminating the fruits and vegetables we handle. Let's see how these pathogens can spread without anyone knowing it, even during harvest and packing. Suppose you get pathogens on your hands by doing some ordinary, everyday thing, like going to the bathroom, or blowing your nose, or putting on your boots. These microbial pathogens that are on your body, clothes, and hands can be transferred to food contact surfaces and fresh fruits and vegetables during growing, harvesting, and packing. Preventing contamination. As you can see, there are many different ways pathogenic microorganisms can move onto your hands and surfaces to contaminate fruits and vegetables. Luckily, there are many things you can do to prevent contamination of fruits and vegetables and food contact surfaces. It begins before you even arrive at work. Bathing daily, wearing clean clothes, and washing your hands often are examples of good hygienic practices. That is why washing your hands and practicing good personal hygiene is very important for your own health, as well as for the safety of the fruits and vegetables you harvest and pack. Washing your hands can prevent you from getting sick and can prevent pathogens from being passed to the fruits and vegetables you handle. Of course, there is risk for contamination at every step in the food system. 
for growing, harvesting, sorting, packing, and transporting, while on display at the market, and even during preparation at home. But the only thing you can control is your own actions and the things you do to protect the food you harvest or pack. After that, we can only hope everyone else is doing their job as well as you do yours. Food safety resources for you. A few of the resources that must be provided for you so that you can implement food safety practices include clean and readily accessible toilets and hand washing facilities. Toilet facilities may be fixed or portable and must be supplied with adequate toilet paper, hand soap, water, and single-use paper towels or other hand drying devices for your hand washing needs. They must also be ventilated, properly constructed, and screened to ensure your privacy. If you see that your facility is running out of toilet paper, soap, paper towels, or water, is dirty, or has some other problem that makes it unsanitary, tell your supervisor immediately. It is every worker's responsibility to help keep the toilet facilities sanitary through proper use and informing supervisors of maintenance needs. While most people know how to use a toilet, some may have questions about how to properly use them. Field toilets have an elevated seat to sit on. Clean toilet seats will not transmit diseases, so sit down to avoid urinating or defecating on the seat. Never stand on the toilet seat. Sometimes field toilets have urinals to use for urination only. Commercial field toilets are designed to have toilet paper deposited directly into them. Never place used toilet paper next to the toilet. Always throw it into the toilet. Packing houses often have flush toilets. Used toilet paper should be deposited into the toilet and then the toilet should be flushed after each use. If there is a problem and the toilet will not flush, notify your supervisor. Always wash your hands after using the toilet. Some of the most serious illnesses happen because people who handle food do not wash their hands after they use the toilet. You must also wash your hands before beginning work and any time you are returning to work. Some other important times include before and after eating, after smoking, taking breaks, having contact with animals, handling biological soil amendments of animal origin, and any other time when your hands may have become dirty and may be contaminated with microbial pathogens. While working with fruits and vegetables, you should avoid contact with wild and domesticated animals. If contact with animals is necessary or part of your job, it is important to minimize the possibility of contaminating fruits or vegetables by washing your hands before handling produce or touching any food contact surfaces. You may also need to change your clothes, including changing your boots, to reduce microbial risks before returning to work with fresh produce. Now let's review the best hand washing technique for removing dirt and pathogens. It's important to take enough time to wash your hands properly. A recommended guideline for thorough hand washing is to continue washing for at least 20 seconds, scrubbing all areas of your hands. First, thoroughly wet your hands under the running water. Apply plenty of soap and work it into a lather. Be sure to wash all surfaces of your hands. It's natural to pay attention to the palms, but sometimes we forget to wash the backs of our hands between our fingers and exposed areas of our forearms. Don't forget to work the soap into the areas under and around your fingernails too. When you've finished washing, rinse your hands and dry with a paper towel or electric hand dryer and throw the used towel in a trash can when you're finished. Never use a towel more than once and never share a towel with someone else. Wet towels can spread microbial pathogens from one person to another. Never just rinse your hands quickly without soap and wipe them on your clothing. Not only are your hands still dirty, you could pick up even more pathogens from your clothes. Practicing good hand washing is the best way to reduce the risk of pathogens being passed from your hands to the fruits and vegetables that you handle and food contact surfaces that you touch. Your employer may also provide a hand sanitizer, but use it only after washing your hands with soap first. If used alone, sanitizers can miss the microbial pathogens that may be hiding in the dirt on your hands, and sanitizers don't work against some types of microbial pathogens that can make people sick. If you are required to wear disposable gloves, remember to use them correctly. They are not a substitute for hand washing. In fact, proper glove use requires that you first wash and dry your hands, then put on your gloves. 
Make sure your gloves are replaced anytime they may have become contaminated, torn, or damaged. Any hand jewelry that cannot be cleaned and sanitized properly must be removed or at least covered with gloves whenever you are handling fruits or vegetables. You may also be asked to remove other jewelry, including necklaces and earrings, while you are working. These can represent a physical hazard and many farms are required by their buyers to have employees remove jewelry while they are working. If you are required to wear reusable gloves, such as rubber gloves, the gloves should be washed as frequently as bare hands. Remember to properly wash your hands before and after putting on reusable gloves. And throw the gloves away when they get ripped, torn, or become uncleanable. Some farms and packing houses have their own additional policies about wearing gloves. Be sure that you know the glove use policies in your operation. Sometimes you will run across things that are not quite right and that you know need to be corrected. For example, if your hand washing facility is low on water, soap, or paper towels, or has some other problem, let your supervisor know so it can be restocked or repaired. There may be other things you notice as well, such as pests in the packing house or other things that are food safety risks. Be sure to tell your supervisor if you notice a food safety risk so that corrective actions can be taken. Everyone has a food safety role to play and can reduce risks through their daily actions. Drinking water. Your employer should provide drinking water for you that meets the standards for clean, pure drinking water. The water container should be cleaned before filling and covered to prevent anything from contaminating it. The water container should only be used to carry drinking water. If disposable cups are provided, use each cup only once, then throw it in the trash container. To protect yourself and your fellow workers from getting sick, never share cups, water dippers, containers, or water bottles that you brought from home because pathogens can be easily transferred from one person to another. If water is provided from a drinking fountain, the fountain should have enough pressure to project the water well away from the spout. To protect yourself from getting other people's illnesses, never place your mouth on or near the spout. Putting your mouth on the spout is like sharing someone else's cup and the pathogens that could make you sick. If your drinking water facility is low on water or cups or doesn't work well, let your supervisor know immediately. Do not drink water from a hand washing sink. Although the water is clean, it may not be safe to drink. If you are unsure, ask your supervisor. Not having water available when you need it can lead to you getting sick from dehydration. It is important that you stay healthy while you work. Remember, you cannot eat, chew gum, smoke, or use tobacco products in the field or packing house. Your supervisor will show you the appropriate areas where you can take breaks. Your health and safety. The first thing you must protect is your own health and safety. If you have symptoms of illness, such as fever, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, you should not go to work. These symptoms indicate you could be infected with microbial pathogens that could contaminate the food you are handling and your coworkers. Do not handle fruits and vegetables until you are well. It is also important to recognize these symptoms of illness in visitors to your farm to ensure that they don't contaminate you, the produce, or food contact surfaces. This is why all visitors must be made aware of your company's food safety policies and have access to toilet and hand washing facilities. Don't forget that sometimes people can carry and spread pathogens even when they do not feel sick, so practicing good hygiene every day is important for all workers and visitors. Report any sign of illness to your supervisor, including infections or cuts. If you cut yourself while working, seek immediate first aid and notify your supervisor to ensure that any produce or produce packages with blood on them can be destroyed and equipment can be cleaned. If you have a sore, cut, or blister, apply proper medication and cover it with a bandage. And if the sore, cut, or blister is on your hands, you should wear disposable gloves, even if you don't normally do so. Ask your supervisor to provide gloves for you to wear over your bandage while your wound heals. This will provide added protection to both you and the fruits and vegetables you are handling. Harvest considerations. If you harvest fruits and vegetables, you also need to be aware of the food safety risks, including signs that a fruit or vegetable may be contaminated and should not be harvested. Any fruit or vegetable contaminated with animal feces must not be harvested. 
You should notify your supervisor if you have any food safety concerns. Fruits or vegetables that have been submerged or contacted by floodwaters are another example of contaminated produce that must not be harvested. Fresh produce that is contacted by flooding from overflowing rivers and streams is considered adulterated by the FDA and should not be sold or consumed by humans or animals. Food contact surfaces, such as harvest totes and tools, can become contaminated with microorganisms and pass this contamination onto fresh produce when it contacts these surfaces. You must inspect containers and equipment that contact fruits and vegetables to be sure they are clean and in good repair so they do not lead to cross-contamination of fresh produce. This includes all containers you use to collect and transport harvested fruits and vegetables, such as bins, buckets, wagons, carts, or mechanical harvesting equipment. Look for any signs of contamination, such as animal feces or other filth that should not be there, and could lead to contact with microbial pathogens. Ensure all packing containers are either new or have been properly cleaned and maintained. Inspect harvest equipment and food contact surfaces to ensure they are clean and undamaged so that pathogens such as bacteria cannot hide in hard to clean crevices or cracks. If you find a problem with a harvest container or other piece of harvest equipment, make sure you report the problem to your supervisor so the problem can be corrected. Review. Remember, by practicing good personal hygiene, you protect your own health, your family's health, and the health of everyone who eats the fruits and vegetables you grow, harvest, and pack. The single most important thing you can do to protect yourself and others is to wash your hands before beginning work, after finishing work, and frequently throughout the day. Always wash your hands after you use the toilet, before starting work, or returning to work, before and after eating and smoking, before putting on gloves, after touching animals or animal waste, and any other time your hands may be contaminated with harmful microorganisms. Let's review some important things. Your employer must provide facilities for you to maintain your personal health and hygiene on the job. These include a private, clean, and sanitary place to use the toilet with a fully equipped hand washing facility nearby as well as a supply of clean drinking water that's readily available to you throughout your workday. Be sure to properly use toilet and handwashing facilities and be aware of your own health and how it affects the fruits and vegetables you harvest and pack. If you are ill or have any symptoms such as diarrhea, jaundice, or vomiting, notify your supervisor. You should not handle fruits and vegetables when you are ill or have intestinal distress because you could contaminate the produce you handle and make others very sick. Even if you don't feel too sick to go to work, chronic diarrhea is not normal and you could be infected with pathogens that can cause foodborne illness. If you have additional medical concerns, discuss them with your supervisor and seek medical care. Your health is very important. Arrive at work wearing clean clothes and wash your hands often throughout the day, especially after using the toilet. Be sure to use soap and scrub your hands for 20 seconds. Protect yourself and the produce you handle. And remember, above all, you and the work that you do is very important. Millions of people all across the world are depending on you and appreciate the safe and wholesome food you help produce. In fact, without your careful work, there wouldn't be the wonderful variety of fresh fruits and vegetables that keep families, just like yours, healthy and strong.